Hello everyone, this is Dr. Scott Perlman uh, on behalf of Jass Medical and Wellness Center here in historic Marietta, Georgia, coming from my home this evening, as you can see. Um, I just wanna give a brief little live video here on a small discussion about the, a post that I put out there on about breast milk. And the CDC, or the World Health Organization is saying that we need to stop doing that so that your vaccine can, can have a better reaction. Um, and I'm sorry for chuckling because I mean no disrespect on that, but it is hysterical how they decide how to keep doing things. Um, that's one. And secondly, I want to talk about something else that somebody else shared me right away, along with vaccination in school, what goes along with the video that I created and the time of events and the line, things that are in line with these times of events are starting to slowly come together, which I, I'm warning everybody about it. And it's, it's coming because it's here. And I just watched a teacher explain to my daughter today and her class online, which I opted out for her to go back to school because she's staying home. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them about grabbing my kid and inoculating my child, which I will read the second half right from the CDC site for you when it comes to this garbage. The breast milk scenario, you know, I see everybody's arguing and fighting and, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to post things like that for you to all fight and argue like that other than to maybe to discuss because discussions are needed because it's good that we all talk about it because it needs to be open and people that understand need to share the knowledge of what's going on with all these vaccinations and how these times are the most important times for our children than ever before in history. And if you think that's not so, the second half of this conversation, I'm going to read to you right off the CDC site of an article that was created back in 2019. And again, they put these things in place so they bring them to the floor, especially now as we see like they did in Colorado on a Sunday when everybody's either worshiping or in temple or whatever your faith may be, you're not paying attention, especially with this whole COVID thing and all the rioting and all the garbage. And they're in a courtroom on an assembly floor or at some capital passing laws and we're not paying any mind to it. We need to truly pay attention when it comes to these kids. They don't care about our future. They don't even care about the kids. All this is the agenda for them. We always give the statement that, you know, this is the future. This is the time. The kids are our future. They are our future. And if we don't pay attention to what's going to be, these kids ain't going to have a future. We're not going to have one. It is, it's just you got to truly have your head in the sand if you're not paying attention to what's going on. So... The first part of this is about breast milk. There is no ever going to be a duplication of mother's milk ever to be given to a child. The protection that child gets is like no other man product you can ever even think of trying to create, which they constantly try to do and duplicate that in such a way only one agenda involved and that's to make a dollar. There is no true benefit for me our children, for you as an adult, a pregnant mom, you folks need to get that wrapped around because it is truly and only truly and always is and always will be about making a dollar. It's business, folks. It ain't personal. They want no interference to, it's funny that they say they want no interference, especially from breast milk. But the damage that comes from unscientifically proven vaccinations, you can't hold them accountable when something goes wrong. There's something wrong with that picture there. You want me to stop, you want my wife, my daughter, a girlfriend, or this, a cousin, any female you have to maybe stop this so we can give you this poisonous crap that is not proven to be scientifically proven to this baby, something that God given right that he makes women make this product. He designed women in such a way to design breast milk to protect that baby from everything and anything, including viral, bacteria, mold and fungi, anything that gets created on this planet to protect that mom and that child. And you think they think they got a better way. Nothing's changed since I'm a kid. They keep trying to find the most best Similac powdered, liquid whatever that's going to be like mom's milk and it's not going to happen now will i agree with the fact there are plenty of moms that cannot generate milk and the baby needs something even then that's a perfect time for maybe something like that and it needs to be organic it needs to be clean not this horrific synthetic garbage 
that's going to react with your child later on and cause more allergies because that's what happens. That's what happens with all this synthetic Similac and all this other crap powdered liquid baby food, not organic baby food garbage. And if you're looking for a really good organic baby food, yummy spoonfuls, a good personal friend of mine, Agatha, lives right here in Atlanta. She's rated the number one organic baby food in the, in the country. And I know how she hand makes everything in a kitchen with her employees and use all organic product for those babies. And that's what you want to do. Okay. But place and time for stuff. You know, there are a lot of moms, a lot of children, a lot of parents that don't have the money to, to buy things. And I can understand that. But we're talking about a vast majority of people that you want to listen to a vaccine company tell you, stop. And, and I know the pediatricians and the OBGYNs are telling this to parents, telling this to women. Don't breastfeed during inoculations because we want this to work better for you. So what I did repost on top of that post, if you go back and read it, it's going to tell you, do not forget. I'm asking you please not to forget one simple thing. One and you can share this because it will stand still. And I dare any medical doctor out there to prove me wrong. There is not any scientific proof on the first 135 vaccines that are given to children to this day. There is no double blind placebo, placebo saline test that shows the safety and efficacy showing that these vaccines are safe. Not one. Not one. Somebody show it to me. Please show it to me because even Robert Kennedy Jr. spews that out all the time. And it's a fact. It is a fact. You cannot get your pediatrician to turn around and give you that proof while you're signing on the dotted line. And mind you, your right is to take that paper home and read it before you think of ever inoculating your child. And how often does that happen? Almost never. Because you take the faith of the white coat. That white coat is getting very thin these days, and there is a place in time for medical profession, 100%. They work hard. They work crazy hours. The nurses work harder. I feel the, I feel the nurses work harder than the doctors, okay? They work these crazy 12-hour shifts. Why don't they do three eight-hour shifts is beyond me. They overwork these people. They work hard in what they do. They mean well. And then you got a bunch of doctors and nurses that don't as well. That goes the same for an accountant, an attorney, a chiropractor, a dentist. You're going to find them. There's crap in every profession. Bottom line. We need our doctors. We need all our doctors, our chiropractors, our medical doctors, our homeopathic, our naturopathic. We need all of these people to come together for one, and that's for humanity. And that post that I created... And to see some of the, the, the snippets that come back and want to knock a mother's right is, is re, the most ridiculous thing without any proof of what you're talking about. I just beg you, I'm not going to argue with you. I want to beg you to research what you're thinking of because you're not going to find the proper research, I promise you. What you will find is what I'm talking about. Now, the other half, what I want to briefly talk about is somebody shared with me about CDC, and, it, and I looked at it, it was back in, in 2019, about how the CDC is going to overrule a parental vaccination right in school. And your, that if you send your child into school, that is your opt-in option to say, okay, uh, to give my child the vaccine without your consent, ring consent, or acknowledgement whatsoever, and that will be left up to a child. So I want to read this quickly, and I'm going to show you, because this here, I'm just going to show this around like that. This comes off the CDC site, and I'm reading it right off of there. This is an article off of the CDC. And this article will say, and you got to get the gist of it, and I want to talk about that for a minute. It says, an applied consent process which parents are informed vaccination through social mobilization and communication sometimes including letters directly addressed to the parents subsequently right so it says the physical presence this is underlined in red the physical presence of the child or adolescent with or without an accompanying parent at the vaccine session is considered to imply consent 
Now, I'm going to read quickly the rest of that because all these are like, what the hell is that? Right? Yeah, I get it. This practice is based on the opt-out principle and parents who do not consent to vaccination are expected are expected implicitly to take steps to ensure that their child or adolescent does not participate in the vaccination session. This may include not letting the child or adolescent attend school on a vaccination day if vaccine delivery occurs through school. So it's that that is crazy. And I don't know if that bill's been passed and I'm going to research that to see because why that truly doesn't work, number one, who's going to trust what system to identify to the parents that this is what's happening on this date, this time? Who's going to trust an email to go through? I can just see the bigger thing now is that parents are going to scream that I never got an email. I never got a letter in the mail, but yet you took my child and you vaccinated, you vaccinated my child without my say so. Now this backs up Without, I was talking about two bills that are out there, one in New York that is the A99 bill on the assembly floor in New York City, and the other bill, which is the HB6666 of all freaking numbers, and I will say it every time, out of all the numbers we could have ever picked, they could have ever picked, they picked that satanic bull crap, 6666, you got to be kidding me. Either way, I warn people because those bills were both, I think, I think the 60, uh, 6666, I think, might have been 19 or 2020. I know that the A99 is from 19, but this is what they like to do is put them, to the, put them on the floor, get them to the Capitol, get them as a written bill so that when nobody's paying attention, they want to sneak it through down the line. And I created videos, and one video that I created a few months ago, I got a little bit of ridicule, but how far am I now? And I'm going to bring it up again. That that scenario would be that they would send these kids back to school in the fall and that the second wave so-called would be in the fall and what happens in the fall? Kids go back to school in the fall. But then they all of a sudden they block kids out from school. Then this year here in Georgia, some were back and others were not. And I was questioning how come? Why, why Cobb County here not allowed to go to public school and start school but surrounding counties were able to? It was something going on in either or the company, vice versa, that you're not telling the public about or you just weren't ready or are we setting up 5G and whatever else because that's part of this here. Because I warned parents that what's going to happen is they're going to now slowly release these kids to school and then all of a sudden either a, a, a child or a faculty member is going to come down with it and they're going to lock down that school and they're going to claim the only way you're going to get that kid back is if you let us inoculate the child. How far fetched am I from that right now with these bills that are going through? Still, and I will admit, still an hypothesis, but it's, it's not far fetched. Because now I'm also hearing a teacher discussing online to my daughter and these kids online today that those who choose to come back, all these rules that we knew were coming, the mask wearing, the arrows in the hallway, the line in the middle, six feet apart when you walk, all this business. Now I got, I got, I received in an email from Cobb County School District about some of the do's and don'ts about going back to school. And some of them implied about, and I'm on board with clean hands, you know, Keep, you know, keep a little bit, watch what you're doing, hugging, maybe, maybe. And keep in mind, only one and a half of the 1% that get this disease are the kids, which tells you they're not really spreading it. Even Fauci with Jennifer Gardner, I watched. He told everybody in that video that if you don't think you have it, then you don't really need to go for a test to show that you do. I'm watching pictures of Fauci at ball games with a mask on, a mask off, and sitting five straight in a row with him and his cronies. It's okay that he can sit at a ball game with three, four, five people in a row with him, but kids can't sit next to each other at a desk? That, 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 what are you people not seeing? All you so concerned about a damn mask and you don't pay attention to what he does. Do you not see this, this conflicting information here? It doesn't add up because it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Is COVID real? Yes, it is. 
but it's not as dangerous as they're making it out to be. It is no different than any flu for an elderly who gets flu. We lose thousands of elderly every year, every year. You tell me, and I, I want you to dig up the stats. I want you to dig up the stats on the percentage of under 50 who get this disease, who get this virus, okay? It's slim to none. The higher rates are over 60, 65 and above. And even those doctors now are coming more and more forward talking about they know that they've had underlying conditions before COVID ever happened. And because they now get this, it suppresses the, the immune system even further. So somebody who's sick and ill and dying, it's, the regular flu does this to them. We never shut down a country on flu before. And I remember so many years ago when the flu shot vaccine was tainted, and I wonder for those of you who remember this, they started saying, who can take it? What group could and what group doesn't have to now and what group should and shouldn't? They call the shots when they want to. And now all of a sudden, and, and that was supposed to be okay. Now they're starting to go like in New Jersey, I'm getting people writing me now about New Jersey starting to become a mandated law about a, a flu vaccine. Are you freaking kidding me? Up in Massachusetts, in Boston, up there, my friend Josh, Dr. Josh up there fighting with his family. He's got kids up there too, so he now sees it. And they're out in the streets and they're fighting about a flu, mandated flu vaccine? You know what? <laughs> you know, for those of you that get this flu shot and God, God willing, it works for you, good for you, okay? But you are still getting chemicals that you have no idea. And I know you don't because you're not asking what's in that flu vaccine. You're not. And the majority of the people that take that flu shot, we all know the story. Most that get the flu shot get what? They get the flu. So why do you keep doing it every year? It's not properly tested, number one. And more importantly, there's only six to maybe eight or nine strands in that flu vaccine to the thousands that are in the air that they wanted to match. Are they shutting, have they ever shut a country down? Have they ever shut businesses down? Have they ever shut the world down over flu? We lose thousands. Are you people not seeing this? You got to start putting this puzzle together. It's not... It's not difficult, but I understand why a lot don't because the bombardment of the lies and the crap news media want everybody to believe their lines are crap. It's, it's crap. And, and I get some of these doctors and nurses are coming forward. Well, you don't understand. We work in these wards and we're busy and people are dying up here. No shit. You lose people every freaking day in these wards. How come that's not news? All of a sudden it's covert. Again, you got to have your head in the sand. And you doctors have come forward out there, good for you, that for those that were brave enough that on a death certificate, you were threatened by the hospital. If you didn't put down COVID as a diagnosis, you were getting in trouble. So kudos to all you doctors and nurses that have come forward with the BS that they're trying to get everybody to believe. And let's not forget again, when you get administered into a hospital and you come up COVID, that's Medicare paid on $13,000 on that. And if they put you to a ventilator, it goes to $39,000. We can go deeper with this because in the beginning, those ventilators were hurting people, not helping people. Because it's not a long issue. It was a blood issue. And those people drowned it. They suffocated because you gave them ventilators. Now, might some need a ventilator? 100%. But when people were deteriorating, getting worse, why would you ever keep them on it? It was for the money. To falsify a death certificate, that should be malpractice and it should be illegal to falsify HIPAA compliancy alone to falsify a diagnosis code of that death. That should be illegal in itself. Both illegal and malpractice. Yet it's been done and still gets done. And you're not seeing the picture. Now let's talk quickly about masks so you can all go about your evening and I appreciate everybody jumping on and to love, dislike it, share it, whatever. You can't tell me that everywhere you go that you see a mask is a medical grade mask specifically for this COVID crap that's not even in the air airborne. 
And what I mean by that, you have oxygen molecules in the air that's freely in the air and you walk and go anywhere you want and you breathe that in. This virus is not that. You have to get it in your nose, in your mouth, by some kind of contact to wipe it off yourself and get it in your nose. I know we all touch our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our ears. And mind you, the eyes, mucosal, and ears are another way to get this viral. But yet they talk mask, mask, mask. And the majority of these masks I see people wearing out there is a joke. A joke made out of t-shirts, underwear material, uh, this material, that material, and everybody's trying to make money off of it, including the schools. And the mask ain't it. And the virus ain't it. Mass vaccination with tracking and tracing is it. Because even in the documentation that I got from the school showing all the protocol of what they expect to keep going of the cleaning and the wiping and the washing and the distancing, they mentioned tracing and tracking. Really? I've called twice and left a message. What does tracing and tracking mean on your standards there at the school? How do you plan on doing that without children? It doesn't say so in there. You parents need to really read and reread and reread it again. It's okay. It's okay to reread. It doesn't mean you're not knowledgeable. It doesn't mean you're not smart. You want to make sure what you're reading and what these things say. I know we're busy. I know we're all working. A lot of these parents need their kids to go back to school. They can't handle this anymore. I get it. But you're doing, you're rushing them back. For those of you that are rushing them back, you need to slow down. I beg you to slow down because this is the importance of the children. This is their life. This is their future. This is our now for them, their now. So they can have a better then. This is not good. You need, please, I beg you all to just read and pay attention to some of the things they're sending out there. I can't say enough about paying a little more attention. When I saw the arguing on there, I am so sorry because I, I don't, I try my best not to make some of these posts for people to fight and argue by any means. It's about coming together as one for humanity. It's about spreading it and showing what's being said and being told out there to have an awakening. If you think something's not true, then research it a little bit more. And I'm not always correct 100% of the time either. And I keep looking and I keep searching. I hope you're all getting it. And don't be afraid to share and talk it. Please don't. Don't worry about what friends and family are going to say to you or think of you. You know what I'm saying is right. You know what you're feeling is right. To protect your children is your right. And never, ever, ever should somebody take a child from you against your will and break your constitutional right to do what they want with your child, ever. That should never be lost in this country of the United States of America, ever. I know a lot of you may or may not be football fans, but I am an NFL nut, and I am a Dallas Cowboy fan. I'm sorry for all of you that might hate me for that. <laughs> but... All joking around, I no longer get to see the national anthem of this country before the game. Military people I must be flipping and freaking out. I don't know what to say. Things are changing in this world, and I've said it a long, 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 long time ago. There's going to be some crazy-ass attorney and some retarded freaking politician who's going to change the name of this country somehow, same, some way, because they're going to find a floor in some kind of paperwork, and they're going to change this, the name of this country. God forbid. God forbid. I'd hate to even think such a thing. We're all entitled to our opinions, and if I always say it, if everybody thought the same and everything was the same, that would be a problem. So there's no question. I love the rebuttals. I love the opinions. I love the people going back and forth. I think it's great. But when it starts really getting demeaning and disrespectful, there is no place for that on here. That is not how we treat each other. We teach that to our children. We should listen and revise our, our own rules once in a while. And we're all guilty of it. We are. But we got to drag those reins in a little bit and slow down that running horse and just trot a little bit and take a breath. And do not 
if you lose anything in your life, I say it all the time, if you ever lose everything or everything or anything at all in your life, do not ever lose your faith. It is what has been given to you innately, and God has always got you at the worst times. He's always following us. He's always behind us. He's always holding us in his right hand. Always. Always, always, always. Don't ever forget that. God bless you all. Thank you so much for chiming in this evening. I appreciate everyone that always jumps in and shares and likes and loves. You know, we have to stand up. We have to make change. We have to get voiced. We have to come forward and not be afraid so much anymore. But we're going to lose what we have. And I will say it. I don't mean to piss anybody off, but God bless our President Trump and his family. And I will be voting for him. And I pray that he continues his mission to save underground children and women that disappear every year in this country alone. We lose 800,000 women and children every year in sex slaving and trading and all that. And yet we don't see anybody screaming or dropping to a knee for them or not saying a national anthem or anything for these children or these women or the 18,000 foreigners that get dragged into this country for sexing and videoing and trading and sales and all that. We are the highest in the world. You would least think that to be true, but it is true. And I got that information from Mr. Tim Ballard, watching plenty of his videos and his lectures. Keep your children close. Be smart for your children. Be wise for your family. Believe in your God. Don't, don't ever give that up. God bless you all. Thank you again from my heart to all of yours. And as I always say, it's important to me that it's important to all of you. And do your research. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Have a good evening. Enjoy your night. And have a fantastic, passionate, and healthy day tomorrow. Bye-bye.